What a horrible night to have a curse. But at least you can listen to this episode of the Retro Rewind Podcast. Reflux capacitor, fluxing, crew to stations. Scanning for Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, 1987. Prepare to rewind in 3, 2, 1. Welcome, Rewinders, and new listeners to the Retro Rewind Podcast, where we take a fresh look at movies and games from 15 or more years ago. I'm your captain of the pod, Francisco Ruiz, and I'm joined by your exo and mine, Paul the Vampire Interrupting Powers. Hi, I'm PaulJPowers.com, and oh, what a horrible night to have a curse! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Shakespeare over here. Uh, also, for this discussion of the game Castlevania II, uh, we welcome aboard Pastor, Streamer, and Doom Demon Slayer, Dustin Phillips, a.k.a. Pastor Dustin. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. It's going to be fun. So glad you're here, Dustin. Uh, and in addition to Dusan, we also have back with us our tactics officer and games correspondent, Kitos Ruiz. Welcome back, Kitos. Hey, thanks for having me back. Of course. Now that you have a quick flyby of who we are, Paul, can you give us a quick overview of the production specs for Castlevania 2? Sure. Castlevania also 2, as well as was recorded or no sorry it came out august 28th 1987 but in what country japan usa i don't know they're different J states. japan that's the japan japan yeah okay so it was initially released august 28th 1987 correct in japan the playtime averages is about four hours if you actually know what the heck you're doing and there's a record speed run of 30 minutes and 52 seconds by SBD Wolf. I guess that's Silent But Deadly Farting Wolf. <laughs> Rated E. Oh Directed by, sorry for the mispronunciation here. My Japanese is horrible. Gomenasai uh, Hitoshi Akumatsu. And it was programmed by Nobuhiro mm -hmm. Matsuka and Yasuo Kawahara. With artist Noriyasu Tagikushi. And, wow, I'm sorry for this butchering. <laughs> <laughs> the music was composed great. by uh, Kenshi Matsura, Matsubara. Let's, sure. Okay, yeah, we'll go you ahead. ready for the box office game? I suppose. Okay, Castlevania 2 was not released in the box office. What? Yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> And we don't know how much the budget of this game, but the captain here found one source that claimed it made 930000 in sales, but we don't Ooh. know if that's how many units were sold or how much money was made, net, gross. Either way, the claim cannot be substantiated since the precise records were not kept after Tannen shot a newspaper editor after pr a printing of an unfavorable story about him. You know the Back to the Future 2 reference. Yeah, anyway, that's three. Getting that's back a three to reference. You're right. Darn it! Gosh. I just lost my Back to the Future cred there. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> well, but we'll just we can... say it did good. How about this? All right. I can tell... There you yeah. And in fact, Castlevania, the franchise, is in the top 100 best-selling video game franchises wow. of all time. Really? Okay. So, wow. out of 100, how high do you think the whole Castlevania franchise ranks amongst the best-selling video game <coughs> franchises of all time? As Ooh. of 20... 22. Wow. Okay. Well, let's start with our guess. And chat, if you'd like to give a guess to uh, 100, where does Castlevania just the Castlevania franchise, right? Not Castlevania 2, but the franchise rank with all the other franchises. Let's start with Deustin. What's your guess? I'm going to guess pretty, pretty low on that, or mm. I guess high, a high number, because like the <laughs> none of the games are super recent. Uh, but there are a lot of them. Man, I don't, yeah. I'm going to guess, uh, let's say, 62. 62? Okay. How about you, Kitos? Ah, <laughs> uh, man. It's, yeah, I know there's been a lot of games, and I would say at least, I'm, I, you know what? I'm going give it, to uh, give it a little bit of optimism. I'm going to say 21. 21? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to shoot for the moon and go $1, Bob. <laughs> 
So I'll say Wait, one. That number one? <laughs> number one. Number one. Um, All right. And then in chat, Bobo guesses 42 as per his usual arrangement. Uh, Dale guesses 10. Geek Devotions, 15. Enthusiast, one. Oh, there you go, Enthusiast. Uh, Matt plays 22, says eight, and Ray Will guesses 23. So, Paul, where does it rank in all the video game franchises in the top 100? The answer is 89. So, what? Pastor Deustin oh, wins. Wow. Let's wow. Go. <laughs> well done, By the Pastor way, Deustin. Mario holds number one. <laughs> <laughs> this is wow. way better than Mario, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. All right. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and thank you for those factoids. And let's see if any, any of them factor into our memory mind meld or subsequent roundtable discussion, which we will get into once Alice has located our target game. Alert. Alert. Approaching target. Spoilers incoming. Establishing analysis vector. You left him for dead in Konami's Castlevania. How foolish to presume he'd perish without leaving a curse. For now, in Simon's quest for Nintendo, fate stalks your very being, and you need more than clues from cowardly villagers to survive when day turns into night. But just keep telling yourself it's only a video game. It's only a... Huh? <laughs> kind of creepy. Well done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Totally. I'm, that's one of the best game ads I think we've ever had on this show. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. But uh, that commercial uh, kind of brings back some memories about actually playing Castlevania 2. But to give you some context for the things we collectively remembered most before our replay, uh, here is our memory mind melt synopsis of Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. And uh, now here's what we remember about the story. Uh, after Simon whipped Drac's head off his shoulders in the first game, Drac put a death curse on Simon. Now Simon has to travel from mansion to mansion across Transylvania, including Dracula's castle, to find Drac's body parts and bring him back, just so he can immediately kill him again and undo the curse. But I'm not sure why that works. For the gameplay, what we're your call is boring side scroller of a Metroid exploration experience where basically you just get lost and frustrated for several hours at a time. Jumping wolves, skeletons, and fishmen are everywhere, and they get stronger at night, breaking lamps and torches to gain back health that I lose from mu from bunch of zombies constantly spawning and running at me. Sub weapons are virtually non-existent, and the awesome Morning Star whip is the only thing that matters. Also, that slow, awkward animation of going up and downstairs. <laughs> and finally, for multiplayer, what we recall is, nope, unless you count those people watching, then everyone can be bored. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I, you know what? I actually played and beat the whole game, and there were tons of sub weapons, I thought. So, so according to our memories, this, our memories were definitely. Decepted. Uh, <laughs> but based on those memories, as flawed, flawed as they were, uh, what rating did they lead you to predict for this movie before? Wait, um, wait, wait, dang wait, it, wait. For this game. Okay, I'll do that again. Sorry. I have a question. Oh, question. Yeah. Could It says breaking lamps and torches to gain health back. Could you do that? No, I don't think there's any torches. No. I, 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 I never lamps. got anything that got my health back except <laughs> visiting a priest. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> that was a pretty much. So that was another thing that was deceptive. Here, I'll do it again. <laughs> there you go. Hey, happy Double fall? decepted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. This de deception is two layers deep. Uh, anyway, so based on those memories, as flawed as they were, uh, what rating did they lead you to predict for this game before replaying it? Classic, nostalgic, or tragic? Let's start with Deustin. My prediction was tragic. Oh, really? Tragic. Okay. Kitos? Mm -hmm. uh, my prediction was nostalgic. Oh, okay. Nostalgic. How about you, Paul? And Paul, was this, a, this wasn't the first time you've played this game, right? Well, this is the longest I played it because <laughs> before this, um, several decades ago, I played it for about five minutes. Wow. If that. And then, um, <laughs> but then I, I saw you play it for a little bit and I had it on in the background. Mm -hmm. Um on the streams i wasn't paying that much attention but it looked interesting enough to, that i called i predicted it would be nostalgic nostalgic okay and i 
actually predicted classic. I had really fond memories of this uh, growing up. That's actually why I picked it for my birthday pick uh, this time this year. Uh, so, yeah, I predicted classic. And it'll be interesting to see if any of those predictions actually come true. But first, let's get into our discussion, you know, this roundtable of the things we liked most about Castlevania 2. Let's spin up our... Best three. Whip up our best three. Is that what you like, Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Indy. Uh, let's start uh, with our uh, newest guest, Deustin. What's one thing you liked about Castlevania 2? Yeah, so one of the things that I really enjoyed was the whip upgrades. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. That, that was such a <laughs> yeah. That was such <laughs> a neat thing because, like, you know, so many of the the Castlevanias after this that took on that Metroidvania style, mm -hmm. they you know you can upgrade everything and every little little detail, but this was kind of the only upgrade that you had. Yeah. But it was something that you kept looking forward to because as you progress, the enemies get tougher, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, I'm really ready for another whip upgrade, and then totally. just at the right time, bam, there it is, and it looks cool. It <laughs> it it's awesome. Did you? I like that. Did you, Deuce, and get uh, the only other item I know? Well, actually, no, I I just know several. I have the upgrade, the crystal upgrade from white to blue to red, and the daggers oh, yeah. upgrade from normal to silver to gold, I think. So Yeah. Yeah, I I, I did notice that, but I don't think I ever used them. Yeah, <laughs> so I was oh, like, totally. Yes, why do I have too. this? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but I I did notice that that oh wow, I have a gold dagger now. Well, I guess that'll just sit in the inventory too. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I should say the whip upgrade was the only upgrade I cared about and looked forward to. Gotcha there, there totally. Uh, Kitos, what was something you cared a lot about this game in terms of the things you liked about it? Uh, well, actually, it goes along uh, with the whole whip. Uh, the whip is is my is like a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, and just the way that it kind of <laughs> interacts with the enemies, like I like how you hit them and it like pauses them. Like it's just mm. so um I don't know, it just felt it felt good to like whoosh, and yes. then Yeah, exactly. There you go, Paul. <laughs> and it felt you could feel it whenever you attack. So it, it the mechanics of the whip were really nice. And the upgrades are cool too. Yes. I, I actually forgot that the there was a flame upgrade. I, I just remember as a kid thinking the Morning Star, where it's, you get the it sort of uh, glows and there's a spike at the end. I thought that was just the coolest thing. And then to get a flame upgrade in this, I'm like, oh my gosh, even better. That's so cool. Um, but uh, let's go, Paul. What's was uh, you were liking these whip whip sound effects? And uh, was the whip something you really liked about this game? Yeah, I like the just the concept of the what you guys talked about. I wrote down powering up of weapons. Yes, so, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, I yes. only use the whip too. Forget the daggers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the fact that you could upgrade them, uh, I thought that was a nice uh, technique used in the game. Yeah, and I I didn't gravitate to the whip. I mean, I certainly I love the whip, but I sort of gravitated to the whole experience that the item sort of brought about. In that that this game was a Metroidvania, like like you mentioned, uh, Deustin. And that it seemed to start, you know, you had your cool items to start with, and especially the whip, and then buying items and collecting them, and then that opened up new areas. Not that that was readily apparent what you're supposed to do to get to those new areas, but getting the items so that you could get to those new areas was a cool thing. And I think this was, without realizing it, I think this was the first uh, Metroidvania game I'd ever played, because I had never played Metroid before. And so mm. that, that was a really cool experience. Uh, let's go back around now to Deuston. What's something else you enjoyed? Um, another one would be the music. Ah, oh, what yes. music? No, is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and even though like the soundtrack is very limited, there's only a few tracks, mm -hmm. but they're they're so good that like I never got bored of them. I, I never got annoyed with them. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the end and the music changes yes. and you hear new music whenever you get to actual Castlevania, the mm -hmm. castle, and uh, then the final boss music, there's these two new tracks and it just, uh, it really changed the whole setting and feeling and everything. But I, I love the uh, the music throughout the whole, the whole thing. Awesome. Uh, now, you bring up that it, when you got to Castlevania at the end, the music changed. I forgot to ask earlier, 
how far did each of us get in this game? So, Deustin, it sounds like you either got to the end or you beat it. You beat it? I awesome. beat it. Beat it. Uh, Paul, how far did you get? <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> brag or anything, but I got the white crystal. Whoa. <laughs> I, now, is the white crystal the first one you get? <laughs> I think so. In that first village? Yeah. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, how far did I get? Um, like, did you I get got, to any of the mansions? I don't know. I got Dracula's rib. Okay, I don't know so if that was in a mansion yeah. or if it was, yeah. Those are considered the mansions, um, yes. Okay, so um, I I didn't know there were other parts of Dracula lying around to get. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I got a rib. I, I, let's put it this way. I got as far as I could till it looked like there was one ledge I couldn't jump high enough to reach. Yes, so I figured a I graveyard, needed a jumping yeah. mm -hmm. empowerment. Or then there was another part where the water, there were these moving blocks, and I couldn't jump to the other moving block without having a bigger jump either. And so mm. I said well forget it i'm not going through those that <laughs> nightmare again trying to find <laughs> mario jumping power all right fair <laughs> enough uh Akitos, how far did you get uh i actually don't really know i know oh. i got into like a few different mansions but mm -hmm. this kind of goes into my dislike section oh, okay so then we, we'll, we'll get into that we'll i almost saved yeah. mine for my dislike okay. as well but we'll, we'll talk more about that there yeah. uh well i will say i, I uh, just like Dustin, I beat it as well. It was my first time being it. I'd never been it before, mm -hmm. and that was it was a it was a mixed bag experience, we'll say. Um, but uh, regardless, so uh, Dustin, you really liked the music. Uh, Kitos, was the music something that made your like list, or was there something else? Oh yeah, I mean, I instantly put all these different songs onto my my YouTube right? playlist. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hearing them again, I'm like, oh, that's great. I need these. Have I you need yeah. these again? Have you guys, going off a tangent again, uh, have you guys heard of the Megas, the Belmonts? They're sort of lyrical covers of a lot of Castlevania music. Or they do a lot of Mega Man music, but they also have branched off and done Castlevania music. Oh, and, I, I knew, I know of the Megas, and I've heard some of their Mega Man stuff. I didn't mm -hmm. know they had done Castlevania. Too. Yeah, they've done Bloody Tears, mm -hmm. which is amazing, and also Vampire Killer, which is really, really good. So I highly suggest mm -hmm. those. But this is recommendations. We're not doing new tubes right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's something else you liked? Uh, I really liked that this was a side scroller i'm a big fan mm. of side scroller 2d mm -hmm. games mm -hmm. and like mario and mega man mm -hmm. so i i immediately gravitated to the the type of game this is okay well then this this definitely begs the question paul how do yeah. you feel about the whole uh jumping when you jump you can't move you you use whatever inertia you either left with whether it's no inertia or lots of inertia how do you feel about that mechanic in the game I will give you a hint of my dislike. Uh, <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay. I feel like that's Francisco's favorite question in platformers. <laughs> well, I'll Have tell I you asked what. That before? I don't recall. I, I do like the realism. Like, no, no sir, sure. you're not going to jump off stairs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on. Parkour, Simon. Uh, all right. Well, then that leaves uh, one more thing I liked, which was uh, the I thought the mansions. I really liked how they're interesting puzzles. Like you had to figure out like some of sometimes there were like floor bits that were like disappeared or you had to like use your holy water to uncover parts like especially uncovering those little books or parchment pieces of paper to like get clues that weren't really that helpful, but that you could unlock those things. I really I really liked those dynamics of the mansions. So that's one last thing I liked it. But now it's time to get into our classic makers, the things we loved most about Castlevania 2. And since you guys stole mine, I'm going to go ahead and say, <laughs> yes, the music is so good. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I loved all the music. The, the night uh, music, I think, in the was my, night music in the towns the same as outside? I feel like it was a little different, but maybe not. No, it was I different. Think it was At least this... the first town and the first outside that my little area that I was in. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, that, there was one of the night music that I was like, eh. But yeah, the, the mansion music, the, the Bloody Tears main music and the outside during the day was great. Um, I, I like well, so much of the music. That's my classic maker is the music oh, oh, okay. in the woods. 
outside during the day. Mm -hmm. All the others can take mm -hmm. a flying crap. I, at least the ones that I heard. It wasn't that interesting to me. But I didn't, you know, get as far as some people. So there may have been more interesting music that I just didn't get to. Fair, fair. <laughs> uh, Kitos, let's go with you next. What was your classic maker? For for me playing this game, the classic maker had to be the environments, mm. like the different mm. places you'd go to. Mm -hmm. um, oh, like Halloween Town, and then Halloween Town. <laughs> and then the next door was Halloween Town. Well, oh. I mean, don't forget Halloween River Town, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> the forest, the cat, the dreary castles, like everything had a very dreary tone and yeah. like uh, mm -hmm. a dark, dark, uh, dark uh, environment to it. So yeah. it it mm -hmm. it. it felt like i was you know in this like this you know it, it felt like i was hunting vampires yeah like, well yeah, yeah. It, it definitely put you in another world you felt like yeah. you were yeah. some, it transported yeah. you there yeah. And, yeah yeah and the way the art design i felt like it was really evoking the sense that dracula's sort of presence or curse even though he was mm -hmm. dead and in pieces was still over the whole land and yeah mm -hmm. you yeah. definitely get that sense it wasn't so yeah. it wasn't mario no smiling clouds <laughs> <laughs> yeah no <laughs> now so Deuce, and that leaves you and i'm very curious what your classic maker is given that castlevania is really high up there on your your one of your favorite mm -hmm. franchises i believe uh so yeah. In this game, Simon, Simon's Quest, what was your favorite thing? Yeah, and it, it's funny. Uh, I like that y'all all went first because y'all kind of... Mine is kind of a, a summary of all of ours, <laughs> and it's oh, really? the atmosphere. Oh, yeah, okay, the atmosphere cool. of the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just between the, the music, that the atmosphere that that brings, the, uh, the environments, everything, like the art design, like you're saying... Um, it really does give the entire game like this feeling of dread mm -hmm. um, through the whole thing. And it's it's weird because it is so different from mm -hmm. the other Castlevanias. Yeah, like totally. Castlevania 1, it's one of my favorite games ever. I love that game. Castlevania 3, uh, so many of them. But Castlevania 2 really stands out to me in that department. I can't think of another Castlevania that makes me feel like that. Mm -hmm. Most of them make me feel like... I'm this unstoppable force. I can do whatever, you know. But in this, I feel like I'm I'm outmatched here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm in a I'm in a dangerous place. And then especially at the at the end, like through the whole game, you're seeing these different kinds of enemy designs and mansions, and the, it's all this dread. But then at the end, it's like it all is compacted when you walk that long bridge up to Castlevania, the music changes, and you walk through this long, empty castle, like seeing the remnants mm -hmm. of the castle you went through in the first game. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what is coming? Yeah, it's a really cool feeling. Totally. And you're just like, what is coming? You know, I know I'm, I'm about to face Dracula. So very, very good at atmosphere. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so yeah, those are the things we loved most about Castlevania and so now we can get to <sighs> wait good you golly one thing yeah so... sounds like you need to... <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't interrupt yourself master interrupter with your own whip no. sound <laughs> but Fine. yeah I, I forgot something else I liked <laughs> Spirit Blade Productions since 2006, Peter Franson has been operating Spirit Blade Productions to create entertainment and resources that equip, encourage, and inspire Christian geeks. And soon after starting this indie studio, uh, Peter expanded to include a ton more content and community under the banner of Christian Geek Central. I'm personally a big fan of what Peter is doing, and you can join me in supporting him on Patreon so that you and I can help keep his ministry going and growing. Not to mention your support can unlock fun rewards for you to enjoy, which include the first part in the Spirit Blade audio drama trilogy. Head over to patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions for all the details. That's great, Francisco. Um, but what does that have to do with Castlevania 2? Well, uh, like the Spirit Blade trilogy has to do with like, has the supernatural in it like angels and demons and there's supernatural elements in this game for sure uh-huh fine i take your whipping sound to mean you want some more related to castlevania 2 is that right yes please all right how about some trivia then uh yeah. did, did you all realize that the artwork for the game Featuring Dracula emerging on a balcony bears a striking resemblance to the cover of the 1983 Dungeons and Dragons module in, entitled Ravenloft. Have you guys ever heard of this? No. This is the first time hearing of it. Okay, so 
My question to you guys, though, is what video game box art inspires you the most, or at least inspired you enough to buy the game that you saw this box that art and you're Mega like, Mega Man, Whoa. boy, did that ring true to. <laughs> Can you bring no, that not one up? All. If you've never <laughs> seen the box art to the U.S. version yes. of the first Mega Man, wow. Uh, go and have yourself a laugh. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's interesting because it kind of ties in with um, what I think about this game, which I'll get into a little bit later for my final rating. Okay. Um, my parents went and got us kids the uh, the Back to the Future NES game. And so a lot of people find that game really hard and really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of them. But it was like one of the games that we had laying around. And back then, it's like that was your only option if you wanted to play a game. That's so fair, yeah. The, I was able to beat it. Uh, that's a lot of hours. But be, uh, I, it reminds me of this game that's kind of difficult with puzzles, that it takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I think it was beaten. It was by a lot of people back then because they didn't have very many other options back at, during the NES days. Mm -hmm. that, that's a fair point. But so the Back to the Future art inspired you to yeah. get that game? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> to answer you. your question. Thank you for landing that story. I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Deucen, how about you? Can you think of one? Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple of uh, box arts that that really like stand out to me. I'm, I mm -hmm. can't picture one that like inspired me to actually purchase it, but so I can give you an answer to the question. I'll go with a couple that really actually just like make me want to play the game. Yes. Perfect. And perfect. Yeah. And one actually uh, probably maybe my favorite is Castlevania one. Uh, I love so good. Oh my God. Box yes. art. <laughs> yes. It's so good. Like it, every part of it looks cool. Like, Dracula, his face floating up there looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Simon looks like, you know, he can do anything. It's just this the castle looks really yeah. cool. It's it's a very cool one. Yeah. Um Yeah, so that, that that's probably my favorite. That that's the answer I'll give. No, Castlevania that, one. That's great. And yeah, you know what? I I mean I, as looking through Castlevania box art to see that one Ravenloft connection. Yeah, it, you know what you're saying that makes me think, oh yeah, and it's so cool how uh Simon is facing the castle. So you can, because you don't see his face, it's better. It's easier for you to transpose yourself into the role of the hero, which is a great. Right. I love how he looks all Conan the Barbarian and stuff. It's, it's yeah, very yeah. Cool. yeah. And and then I love how the game starts whenever yes. you, you know you push start and he walks in front of the castle and like my kid brain, you know, it's like that's the eight bit version of that poster exactly. of that box art. You know, exactly. He's ready to fight. So uh, Kitos, how about you? You know. I'm having trouble thinking of like a box art that mm -hmm. sold me because mm -hmm. um, they all suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's just it's been so long since I purchased the game like with box art. Yeah, um, yeah the I get that. the last one I can think of where I like went to the store and was like, "Oh, this looks really cool. I want to play this." Mm -hmm. Based on the box art, was mm -hmm. actually uh, Final Fantasy IX oh really okay yeah is that I the one with the monkey or the sword gun he's not a monkey whatever i don't know i've never played it <laughs> yeah it's a, there's a there's tail? a guy with like uh a big sword i mean that describes a lot of final fantasy well but sure yeah it's it's like a knight with a big sword but he's not even the main character okay um the the guy you're thinking of with the tail he, yes 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 yeah he's in it okay, and then okay. there's like a black mage on the front and there's also this like guy in army army gear oh. on the side, and okay. you're like, "What is he? Like, <laughs> what, what's his deal?" Uh -huh. Yeah, it, I, it looked just really interesting because it had a lot of like you know medieval knight plus like this army dude, yeah, and then just like random common people, and then a uh, you know Final Fantasy old school mage. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was like it looked like such a mix of so many different things all at once. I remember just being so interested in it. Awesome. But, that's cool. But to back uh, the Captain Francisco here up, uh, Bob and Larry told me that if it does have a tail, it is a monkey. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in some here from uh, from chat. Uh, Dale, at least one. Dale says, I'm not sure on that one, but I will say an aerial game called Sky Shark. I feel like I've played Sky Shark, but I don't recall it. Does that sound familiar to any of you guys? 
Mm-hmm. I thought an aerial game was Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I'm I just I have no words for that. No words at all, Paul. Um for me, I'll say the the one that I remember looking at and like I really want to play that game. That's so cool. I do you guys remember when New Eggs were a store like that you could mm-hmm. go into? So Wait. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. So um, me and Kitos and our family just moved to a, a place where it had a new egg store. We went there, and they were selling games and uh, and books also. But And there was uh, Warcraft, Orcs versus Humans. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I got to get that. And then uh, really enjoyed Warcraft pretty much, for the most part ever since up until like 2005-ish. But yeah, so that would be the one for me. Great trivia, Francisco. And I have the answer to our last audience question, meaning our previous audience question, sure. which again was, what film with a nautical theme do you want us, the Retro Rewind podcast, to cover? So let's spin that up. Let's and spin the wheel yeah. and see who wins. So there's just two people enter this time. Okay. Two people enter. One person leaves. Oh, Dustin does not get his win streak, unfortunately, because congratulations, Dallas uh, slash Geek Devotions. Uh, So you'll be getting a... So his answer was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. uh, Disney's 20,000 Leagues uh, Under the Sea. Oh, nice. Um, Yes. And you'll be getting a free... You can either get the free Twitch uh, subscription or you can tell me someone you'd like me to give it it to because I think you're already subscribed. Uh, But regardless, thank you so much uh, to everyone who entered. All right, so speaking of uh, what movies we should review, Mm -hmm. um, here is this episode's listener question. Most of the movies we review come from our Rad Rewinders. That's you, the listener. Mm -hmm. Everyone can vote on which movies we should cover at RetroRewindPodcast.com slash vote. The question is, how does one nominate a movie (laughs) like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? How, <laughs> how does it get on the list to be voted on? It seems that only a few people know how to do this. So if you do, send your answer so we can read it and other people know how it's done. There you go. I like it, Paul. <laughs> Very meta of you. I enjoy this. Uh, yeah, so send those answers to how to nominate a film, uh, because we know some of you know how to do this, to trivia at RetroRewindPodcast.com by the time we record our next episode, which gives you – it usually gives you a week and a half, but when this drops – by the time we record the next episode, you only have like a couple days. So act fast. Operators are standing by. Uh, but now that we all have by had what? some trivial fun, let's find out what memories you, our awesome rewinders, had about Castlevania 2. I'll start us off with uh, Ryan R. Jackson says, The first Castlevania game I ever played. I've always loved this game. Though it's considered uh, the black sheep of the Castlevania series, still have a love for it. My favorite Zelda game is Zelda 2. Maybe I just have a natural love for sequels. Or they're just better. (laughs) (laughs) Stanley Wright says, I enjoyed this Metal Gear and Contra. Awesome. Uh, Sir X Rome says, I remember watching Francisco play it. (laughs) That's good. That counts. Check out our streams at twitch.tv at (laughs) slash retro rewind pod. Indeed. Castlevania underscore dude says, this was the first game that led me to start using notebooks and writing down stuff. This right? game took a lot of trial and error for me. Man, I ended up doing the same thing, Castlevania underscore dude. Uh, Christopher Tiny Sullivan says, I really liked the game when I was younger, but it's flawed in that you had to have a Nintendo Power to finish it. By the way, I never did, but I must have spent hours as a kid trying. Man, I thought he was going to say Nintendo Power Glove. I'm like that would be insane <laughs> to try to use that to be. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Wardell White says, "Not much. Never owned it. Only rented it once. Watching Francisco play the game didn't bring back any fond memories, oh. but it was great watching him have fun playing it." Uh, David Gardner says, "Gave me the creeps playing it as a child. Probably from a, probably from the wonderful music." Hmm. Nate Henderson says, love the game, but certain parts of it were impossible to pass unless you subscribed to Nintendo Power <laughs> or you spoke vidiot with your buddies on the playground. Kneel on the corner for three seconds to enter the lake? Come on, man! <laughs> 
And uh, Kevin Joshua Burnham uh, leads us into our dislike section by saying, screw that game. Apparently, he didn't have much fun. Wow. Playing it. <laughs> how do you really feel, Kevin? Yeah, tell us how you really feel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, let's get into the things we actually didn't like. The things that we would say, heck with this game. Uh, let's get into our... Worst three. Worst three things about Castlevania 2. And let's start with Deucin again. What's something you disliked about this game? <sighs> the farming. <laughs> Having oh, to oh. farm for hearts. Yes. Wait, uh, wait. What do you mean? I didn't get that far. Or do you mean grinding? Is that the same thing? Same thing. Yeah, yeah, same okay. thing. No, there's a part where you start a garden and you have to you know, <laughs> raise crops. I don't know. You, maybe you... You're, you're, you <laughs> raise garlic <laughs> to fight yes. this dragon. Yes. It's the way I save money. I gar grow my own garlic yeah. and laurels. <laughs> um. Yeah, just the, the grinding, uh, because it, it was all fine, and most of the time it wasn't a problem, mm -hmm. but when it was a problem, it was a major hassle, because yeah. I would need, like, a whip upgrade or something, and every time you, if you die, you just respawn right where you are, but if you lose all your lives and continue, you still respawn right there, but you lose all your hearts, yeah. which we, which you need to purchase items. Exactly. So, then you go back and you just have to keep grinding the same enemies for 10 minutes or something to get right. the hearts back. Yeah, and so hope that you annoying. don't die again in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because later funny. on, the game's a lot harder. Yep, and, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because I thought the grinding was the easiest part of the game. <laughs> 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 well, you only got the white crystal balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. I had to grind for that for at least a couple minutes. Oh, my. Wow, what a commitment. Uh, Kitos, yeah. what uh, did you just like about this game? Uh, I didn't like that the day night system. I oh, really? didn't really know when it was going to happen. I yeah. assume it's on a timer, but yeah. there's no real, like, you know, notification other than oh, it's nighttime now, and then it, that's it. It isn't there. It there isn't a timer because I can tell you because I played it on an emulator and I saved certain spots, mm -hmm. and sometimes day would come right away after I uh, um, restored it to that really? safe spot, huh. and huh. then other times it would come like a minute or five minutes later. So weird. Maybe not five, but within. It's not exact. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I. I just. Yeah. It. It seemed very. It seemed random. It didn't seem like yeah. it was necessarily. Hey. Like Ke time. Kitos. I'm sorry, but I. The sun has uh, is always out longer or short, depending on whether it's winter, <laughs> summer, spring. I mean, this game is just too real for you. Yeah. <laughs> I Farming, don't know. It changes in seasons. like three minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fast seasons. So you're going around the sun pretty quickly. Yeah. Fine, whatever. All right, but that's that's totally fair. Yeah, the the night day. I I appreciated what it did to make the enemies stronger, but I could see how it, it'd like. It'd be nice that there is some warning. Uh, but yeah. uh, let's see. Especially, you know what? Now that I think about it, when they transition. Doesn't the color palette shift a little bit in in, in between? Mm -hmm. So it seems yeah. like they could just put in that color palette for a little bit uh, to sort of warn you, oh, it's about to turn night or, oh, it's about to be day finally. So I don't know why they didn't do that. I think um, they saved that for the Nintendo 64. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I think probably it's just memory issue. Maybe they can only yeah. have two different states rather than no, three. I yeah. remember this game just fine. I, I don't have a memory issue. Uh, Paul, let's go with something you just liked. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to throw in a bonus one that I didn't like that apparently water kills you, but lava or whatever doesn't. But, but something it's, I didn't it's like. poison slime, Paul. Why would that See, kill that, you? yeah. But water <laughs> doesn't cleanse you. It kills you right away. Anyway, yes. <laughs> I didn't like the controls. Uh, oh, okay. They weren't very um, intuitive, I guess. Mm. They were just very slow moving. The yeah. jumping was wonky. It's not like the other side scrollers that I mentioned before, like Mario and Mega Man, where you have control of the jumping, like, uh, like I know Francisco likes to ask about. So okay. this is, <laughs> I didn't realize, uh, I honestly didn't realize that was a thing. <laughs> uh, the, we should gather all the clips of you oh asking about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, but it made it more, it didn't make it as enjoyable to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. For me. Yeah. Like, so if, if the, physics were more like more arcadey like you could move as you jumped it'd be 
funner yeah, for you, or, you say? or even um ghosts and goblins where once you committed to a jump it you could still double would jump do that. The other way. yeah yeah you know it would still go that but it just it didn't feel like you had as much control of the character okay. as you do in some other games all right that's mm-hmm. fair uh let's see something i didn't like was and this goes to what some of our our listeners uh our, our memories were, which, by the way, thank you, everyone, for sending your memories in. Really appreciate you guys getting to add to this conversation. Um, but, yeah, it was so hard to surmise where to go. Uh, uh, and a map, like just pulling up a, a map mm. with just boxes for, like, where you've been or where you might need to go would have been so helpful. I ended up having to just uh, count on a, a strategy guide to get to uh, ca- uh, the Dracula's castle because I just could not find it otherwise. Wait, mm. wait, wait. You want... Uh, a clue for when the sun is about to go down and you want to you want to play zelda is what you want to do <laughs> <laughs> well i will be playing that as part of nest quest uh eventually but yes um wow uh let's see let's go back to let's go back to kitos what's something you didn't like um the other thing i didn't really like uh, is that um the NPCs, I mean, the oh information gosh. they gave was so <laughs> did it mm. did not help me. It's like in this play, in this town is this hint, and it's like there's no town names anywhere. How am I <laughs> supposed to know what you're talking yeah. about? Oh hey, I don't want to brag, but one guy offered me his daughter. <laughs> I didn't see her around. But... Wow, Paul, how did you manage that? Uh, she was never around to be found, but if there was, you know, <laughs> it was available. She was available. That's fair. Wow. Uh, um, Dusen, how did you feel about the towns, or was there something else that made your dislike list? Well, yeah, mine was was pretty similar. It was just the that everything was so cryptic in yes, this game. Yeah. It's like the <laughs> yeah the uh, the the information from the NPCs like one guy tells you don't look into the death star or you will die. Right. Yeah, what, right. is what, is what is that? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? I uh, think that was a Star Wars joke <laughs> slipped in there. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just so weird and then uh like not knowing where to go, mm-hmm. wh- where you're supposed to go next. Like I did the same thing. I followed. I didn't follow a strategy guide, but I followed uh, just a big world map mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I could see everything. Yeah. And so I put the pieces together. Okay, well now I need to go here and yep. and whatever. But um, without that, I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to figure some of this out. Um, oh, with that, it it was it wasn't bad, but the game itself, just looking at the game on its own merit, it it's so cryptic. Yeah. And then like. Um, even that carries over to things like in the dungeons and, or the mansions and places mm-hmm. where like you're falling through the floor and so you're, you never know where you're supposed to go. And then like parts of the mansions have no point at all. Like <laughs> everything is at the bottom and there's this whole like three story structure that you can go up and explore and there's right? nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, or so, was yeah. there, maybe that's the, <laughs> maybe I just missed it. <laughs> Well, That's I mean, the Death Star is. I think sometimes there are, uh, like I was saying, there's these little books that you, if you throw your mm. holy water at the walls that disintegrates them, it'll be books that give you clues about what's going on. But uh, so maybe, maybe that's what those extra rooms are for. But, you know, I'm that leads right into something else I didn't like, which I wish. So I know things were cryptic in this. So I, I guess this sort of goes against that grain or maybe it doesn't. But I both wish that there was more story in this game, like that through the dialogue. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Erase the crypticness and actually add story, add add things that mm. make me curious about, okay, why am I going to this mansion? What happened there? Why? Yeah. Like something that's like, yeah, at that mansion, they love baby back ribs or something. It's like, oh, I wonder if I get <laughs> Dracula's rib there or something. I, I don't know. That's a horrible example, <laughs> wow, but just something... <laughs> <laughs> something like that that evokes oh i want that's a clue to what i might find there or what why there those acolytes there had that piece i don't know something something that increased the lore of castlevania as opposed mm-hmm. to yeah you can have my daughter or oh you're attractive can i go home with you i mean just things like that that serve no real purpose um and coupled with that i would have preferred bosses at each mansion I don't know. If, I mean, I liked, mm-hmm. like I said, one of my likes was the maze, sort of the interesting puzzles in the maze, in the mansions. But I would have, 
I, there were, I think there's two. There's the Camilla, which is that weird gray face, and then the Reaper. Yeah. Um, right. And, and two of them. But I, w- I would have liked bosses in each one. I sort of missed that from Castlevania 1. And, uh, yeah, so that's just something else I didn't like. The limited story, if any, um, and lack of bosses. But I guess, I, I like like Keto said, maybe it's a memory thing. I'm not remembering the bosses or something. Um, or maybe it's a memory thing. It couldn't hold anymore. I, I know. I was making a joke this whole time, Paul. Oh, sorry. I took it <laughs> oh, literally. Sorry. Word. I need to be, you know. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Uh, but, Paul, what's one more thing you didn't like before we get to our tragic makers? I agree with everything that you've been saying about being cryptic, and even more so because the difficulty level is set too dang high (laughs) on this game. I mean, you have jumping blobs that randomly run after you, and then like three or four touches by them, and you're dead, and you lose everything, like your your hearts and stuff. So it just, I would have liked a little more um, strength, or something uh, to mm-hmm. go along with this massive grinding and map mm-hmm. exploration. You need more strength to do that. Okay. So oh, at least, or maybe you, when or at you least get for, hit, you don't get t- as much life taken off or something like that. Is right. that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so before we get into our tragic makers, Dale asks a good question, which we haven't, none of us have touched on. So maybe this is one of your guys' tragic makers. Excuse me. And if it is, then... By all means, hold your peace. Uh, but he asks, you guys like the graphics in this game? Watching Francisco play, they they still look like they were still somewhat as rich as they were when we f- they first hit, when this game first hit the shelves. But do you feel the graphics are were dated? It's yeah, a hard I, question. Yeah, because yes, they're <sighs> dated, but they do the job. But it's yeah. not like oh. I, you got to check out the graphics on these right. this game here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. It feel... matches the cover art verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel to answer you, Dale, for myself. I do feel that uh, they looked better to me overall, especially like the backgrounds a lot of the time and uh, the enemies. Uh, kind of, sort of, Simon looked better in this game than in the first Castlevania. Uh, but overall, the I feel like the graphics hold up if you enjoy eight bits graphics a big pixel art i'm more of a fan of 16-bit pixel art uh so the graphics of the genesis the super nintendo <clears throat> but that's more just a, a preference a lot of people just call those all 8-bit graphics um uh, anyone else want to chime in yeah I, I would say that while the graphics are dated at least each graphic you could understand what it is like yes. it, yeah. it was it it's was very, very easy to understand yeah it was very clear uh mm-hmm. okay that's a tree Okay, that's yeah. an enemy. Like, okay, that's these lava. are stairs. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, there may be a few things that were a little unclear, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it was pretty easy to tell what things were. And some of these older dated graphics, sometimes they'll put in stuff. It's like, what, what is, is that, that supposed what to be? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's the med bay. Well, it would have been helpful, <laughs> you know, 20 lives ago. Yeah, um. <laughs> exactly. So I, I will say the game, while well, it looks dated, it's still. It's nice. It's clear and understandable to play through. Awesome. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into our tragic makers, which I'm just going to go off what Paul said, because I completely disagree in one aspect. Um, Excellent. I, (laughs) man, that Dracula boss, I don't know if it's just I had the crystal and if you don't get the crystal or the diamond or whatever it's called, it's, it's a lot harder. But it was he was such a pushover. I mean, especially mm-hmm. compared to the first Castlevania and Super Castlevania, where I had to work, I had to, I had to practice, I had to drill beating Dracula. This guy is like, I mean, I guess he's in a weakened form because he just emerged say, from a bunch of body parts. But, alive? but seriously, still, I was, I was, I was really let down by how easy it was to kill Dracula. I was wanting a bigger boss fight. I mean, I was expecting like another form or something. I was like, oh, that was easy. There's another form. Um, but oh, it's just it's too easy. So that's that's my mm-hmm. tragedy maker for Castlevania 2. Um, let's go with uh let's go with Paul next. Well, the difficulty I said was too high, but the replayability for this is way too low. Really? Like, oh. I got I, I did not want to 
when I got to a point where I can't jump, I'm like, good, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> It it did not make me want to, oh, I got to find the jumping power now. Let me go and slog through and try to figure out how to, to beat these guys again without getting killed for hours. No, here's your problem, Paul. We're going to take away all your other games, so this is all you have. Back to the Future game style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, oh my yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, that's, that's, that's fair. So it's just like it got... You didn't want to replay it because it's just like I don't know what to do. It's too cryptic. I, I yeah yeah it's, okay. it's difficult. It's not. I can't even jump right. Like <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Deuston, I know this is like your favorite game series, but what's the thing you hated yeah. most about your favorite game series in the context of this Simon's Quest game? Yeah, it's well, it's interesting you phrase it that way because what what kills this game for me is what's so strong in so many other Castlevanias. Oh. And it's a point you've already said is the bosses. Ah, yes. <laughs> the man ever. That's one of my favorite things about the side scrolling mm-hmm. Castlevanias is there's always this really unique and challenging, fun boss that yes. you remember. Like, yeah. man, I struggled against this or that, or have you figured out how to beat this guy? And, yep. but like, the the first two bosses, Death and the the Face, mm-hmm. <laughs> they never even touched me. Yeah, I'm just like yeah. standing there, just hit him a few times, and well, okay, that's done. And then Dracula, he actually hit me like twice because I didn't know what to expect. He threw yeah, those yeah. rings at me, mm-hmm. but he was dead in about eight seconds, and I yep. was like, well, okay, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's Man, usually guys, such a highlight. Yes, the guys yes, yes. going through the forest, they took like. A longer, like ten hits to right. Kill him, but... Yeah, like uh, so <laughs> yeah. much, else, so much <laughs> right. else of this game was so much more challenging uh, to yeah. have the bosses be just like yeah pushovers. Man, yeah. Uh, totally, totally feel you there, Justin. Um, uh, Kitos, as our game correspondent, I'll give you the last tragic maker. What what did yeah. you hate most about Castlevania Two? Yeah, for mine, it almost combines in with a lot of the things you guys are saying, and I said earlier um, about like how. There's a lot of things that are just, it doesn't tell you. The game gives you no information about at all, Mm -hmm, or it's mm -hmm. very cryptic about. And I I would almost say no map is a tragic maker, but it's more than that for me. Um, uh, It's it's the fact that the things I remember about this game, I think is because I watched you play it way Mm -hmm. back in the day, Francisco. Yeah, Um, so as just quick context, I got this as my... I think is either a Christmas present or a birthday present when I was seven. So that's happy that's, birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah and, you watched me play it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember watching you play it, but I think, you know, I was young. So you guys would explain things to me or, mm-hmm. you know, what was happening or, you know, why it was important you were going anywhere, doing anything on the screen, which mm-hmm. I think probably comes from either a game manual or a strategy guide or some I, kind of outside source yes because playing this game now like going into it like barely remembering stuff from from way back then Mm -hmm. and going into it completely fresh almost as if i'm you know playing it for the first time yeah it's like what am i doing i had had no idea (laughs) like going after dracula obviously (laughs) <laughs> it, it, that's no, the thing it's, it's like well okay castlevania one you killed dracula so what am i doing here like you know yeah, th- there's a... no context at all for what's happening and um and like the towns you're in where mm-hmm. you're at like as someone who didn't know anything i truly didn't know anything i yeah. felt so dropped in mm-hmm. and I didn't even know, you know, what I could really do, like what my, you know, I, I knew I had a whip just from, you know, memory, but yeah. what else? In you fact, know? Like, I, I, I was, I was, I was thinking about this. I don't know why, why I said I was like four times first, but um, <laughs> I thought, you know, going back to what I said, replayability, if this was like a straightforward, like if you had a map or there was like a beginning and ending and like finding Dracula's ribs and all that, I didn't know there was a story behind any of that. If they just made it straightforward and then by the end you uh, got to Dracula and you defeated him and then you died and said, and the game said, oh, you defeated Dracula, but unfortunately you still died from his curse. That would be one ending. But to beat the game, you'd have to go back in the hidden levels 
define the different pieces of Dracula so you knew mm -hmm. what you were doing and the quest for that. I think that would help with the mm -hmm. story and the replayability. Yeah. Of it. Well, yeah. I mean, speaking to that, though, Paul, there are apparently three different endings to this. That actually, I don't care because I didn't get that far. <laughs> it, there, it doesn't make me want to try to get to any of them. All right. Well, just for people that are curious at home, I'm going to find this real quick uh, just so that we can say people know what the three endings are. Yeah. To... Which one did you get, Princess? I, I got, got the normal ending. So I don't know which one, if it's the normal one or not. It's the one where it's black and white and you don't see Simon. Uh, it just says you 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 completed the the curse is gone. And Dracula is dead, and it's, it's, I forget exactly what it said. I clipped it on my channel. If you want to see the ending, there I have a clip on my channel of me uh, reading very slowly the whole ending. <laughs> um, but I think Oh, here's it. another boat. While you're looking that up, I have a yeah, bonus yeah. dislike. It didn't, the Simon wasn't the Simon from Captain N, the Game Master. Jeez, oh my gosh. <laughs> really, Paul? <laughs> yes, that would have been much better. Oh my word. You already have that built-in audience going there. I think they would have... My word, Paul. So uh, the three endings are are as follows. Um, so if so, first, uh, if you complete... So this is considered the ba bad ending. Complete the game in 15 days or more. I guess it actually counts the number of days. I didn't realize this. But neither Dracula nor Simon survived the battle. I think that's what I had. <laughs> Dracula's grave is shown and text appears telling the player... The battle is con consummated and peace. And yeah, this is that's the one. I, so it just gives you text of what happened. The normal ending, which is complete the day in eight to 14 days. Simon defeats Dracula, but eventually succumbs to the curse. Anyway, Simon kneels by Dracula's grave and text appears telling, telling the players stuff. So is that the one you got, Dustin? Yeah, that's the one I had. OK. Uh, and then the good ending, apparently, is Simon defeats Dracula. And this happens if you complete the game in seven days, which that SPD. What? Uh, wolf guy How must have done. How can you do that without farming? What? Well, this guy that did in 30 <laughs> minutes probably did it. Uh, Simon defeats Dracula and is freed from the curse. He kneels by Dracula's grave and text appears telling the player that the encounter with Dracula is terminated. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Simon Belmont has put on <laughs> put an end to the eternal darkness in Transylvania. His blood and sweat have penetrated the earth and will induce magic and happiness for those who walk on the land. That's great. So... Wow. Thank you. Then uh, it turns into Mario. Got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! But anyway, uh, getting back to you guys. So that those are the three endings. I got apparently the bad one. Deucen got the normal one, uh, and no one got the good one. But uh, it doesn't matter because apparently a lot of good things to this game. There's lots of bad things to this game. But in totality, now that we've entered all our targeting information into the firing computer, Alice, do you have a firing solution for us? Not with a salvo authority, by the way. Oh, I think so. Let's listen. Firing solution complete. Rating ready? salvo at the ready. On your mark. Yeah, at the ready. Salvo authority. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do we rate Castlevania II Simon's Quest? A classic would recommend anyone go out and play this game, like get on a collection. Konami's been releasing collections of games, so definitely get it so you could play it on one of those collections. Or... Or buy an original copy because it's so good. So a classic. Anyone should play it whether or not you've played it before. A nostalgic. It's worth your time if you played it as a kid and remember it fondly. It's worth to, you know, revisit it like an old friend. But if you've never played it before, you're probably better off playing one of the other Castlevania games. Uh, or a tragic. It's not worth your time. Even if you have fond memories of, of this game, don't sully those with a replay. And definitely head for the hills to another Castlevania if you've never played it before. So we'll start with our, our guests uh, first. And uh, Dustin, what is your final reign for Castlevania II, Simon's Quest? So my prediction was tragic, mm -hmm. but my final rating is nostalgic. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> playing through the whole game, I never beat the game as a kid. I, I actually played it pretty later in life and didn't get very far. I just played a little bit into it, but uh, playing through the whole game this time, mm -hmm. um, I think while it does have some very serious flaws and some things that <laughs> I wish they would do better, like the bosses and, yes. and fix some of the cryptic stuff and whatever, mm -hmm. um, but I think 
uh, the atmosphere, the music, those kind of things really do set this game apart and give it um, a unique uh, place in the Castlevania lineage. Uh, totally, I would yeah. I would recommend many before it, but I, I wouldn't say that this is one that just nah, forget it exists. Uh, I think it 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 definitely has some merit. It's it's worth playing, but I'll give it one caveat. Unless you know the game backwards and forwards because you played it a thousand times as a kid, play this game with a map or a strategy yes, guide. If you have totally. that, it it can be a good experience. Mm-hmm. It can be a fun game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, let's go with Kitos next. What's your final rating? Uh, so I originally thought it would be a uh, nostalgic. nostalgic. Yep. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to say it's a tragic. Tragic. Uh, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um to me the fact that you know like if i thought about someone else playing it for the first time and then mm-hmm. being dropped into the same game that i felt i was dropped into mm-hmm. i i could just i could feel the frustration i could hear the same same issues popping up like where do i go what am i doing what is this like and the the worst part is i feel like the game doesn't ever answer those questions for yeah, you yeah, yeah. have to get a strategy guide or a map too so to me i i can't i, I have to i have to rate it a tragic i i think there's a lot better castlevania games out there um even even castlevania one i would say is better <laughs> <laughs> um, and i did get the collection the Konami oh, cool. collection um, oh, nice. on my switch um but i can safely say you could probably skip this game if you haven't played all right it before all right very fair paul what say you i predicted nostalgic mm-hmm. and I-, I can see why people like it um because of its puzzles but for me, I never want to play this game ever again. <laughs> so uh, for me, it's got to be tragic. Oh, man. But I would say you, it's funny that you mentioned, uh, we mentioned Zelda earlier with the, mm-hmm. um, and that is a game where the, it is cryptic in a way. There's puzzles to solve. And I I enjoy the replayability on that. So I'm not sure why, but I would instead rather play a Zelda game. Okay, that's fair. Um, now, before I give mine, I think this sort of, uh, this little preamble I'm about to say uh, gives you some, uh, we'll, get, we'll sort of illuminate my answer. So when I was seven or eight, I had to do a book report for, for I guess, third grade. And I didn't like to read, so I'm like, what am I going to do a book report on? So we go to the library, it's late, um, I forget who and my brothers went, maybe all of us, I don't really recall, but... Um, Go to the library. I realize it was story time. <laughs> Buying me balls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, go to the library, and I found uh, this book that's a strategy guide for all these games. And in it is Castlevania 2. I'm like, oh, I could actually, I could actually complete Castlevania 2. Oh, my gosh. So I decided I'm going to check out this book. I use it, I read it, and play Castlevania. And then for my book report, I create a comic book of me going to the library. <laughs> Are you checking serious? out this book and like d- not I didn't wasn't able to beat it back then. But uh, again, as far as I could, I eventually had to return the book. And so I was never able to figure out where to go uh, oh. to get Dracula. But but your teacher accepted that as a book report. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, re- I think I got like a B on it or something. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah, so I have suffice to say very fond memories of this game unfortunately it didn't live up to my classic uh prediction but it was a fun thing to play through and i think if you enjoyed it as a kid especially like deuce said, if you have a get a map save yourself some time especially if you're a a (laughs) grown-up grown-up an adult i have kids (laughs) excuse me uh if you're a big person (laughs) Uh, save yourself some headache, get a map, get a strategy guide, and just have fun uh, grinding for uh, hearts, you know, farming, growing that garlic and laurels. It's great. No, uh, but just upgrading your whip and uh, killing some baddies. Uh, and you know what? And just know that you get to, like, don't worry, Dracula is a pushover. So you don't have to worry about this horrible boss fight that you need, like, twitch reflexes to beat. No, you don't. Uh, so 
I rate Castlevania 2 a nostalgic, which means we're at a tie. Dun, 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 oh, man. <laughs> so uh, at some point, we're actually going to institute where any uh, uh, patrons at the $5 level on Patreon, uh, they get to be the deciding vote. And I will get to a point where I can actually just uh, solicit your responses here in chat. I'm not to that point yet. So uh, patrons, I'll be emailing you. Actually, by this time, uh, Francisco from the future, why don't you uh, come and tell us? Uh, let me let me enter Alice. Uh, please send message to Francisco from the future for final reign. Send. It is I, Francisco from the future. I, how you guys doing? Glad to be here with you in the past again. I uh, hear you need a rating for uh, Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2. Yeah, I was, I mean, you guys came to an impasse with that. I was kind of surprised, but our patrons came through giving Castlevania 2 a Simon's Quest, a combined rating of nostalgic. So according to the Retro Rewind podcast, with three nostalgics and two tragics, we rate Castlevania 2 a disputed nostalgic game. So if you enjoyed it as a kid, probably worth some time to pick up again. Otherwise, uh, just go on to play some other Castlevania games. All right, I got to get back, guys. I got some uh, some ribs or some pizza. I don't know. So, something's cooking in the future that I have to get back to. Bye now. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe, really, that's what they decide. Wow. That's so weird. I know. Were you guys surprised by that? I'm, totally. I, I, I'm speechless. I'm shocked. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still speaking if I'm speechless, but well, apparently that's right. what they say. But thank you uh, our, to our reflex capacitors at the um, at the I forget what I call it, but the you the said level five dollar level. Or yeah, the five dollar level. I have a name for that though. Uh, oh, five dollar level for helping us name. design the final rating for Castlevania Two. But you know what? I think it's time to get back to our own time. Good old twenty XX. 20XX Comsats online Receiving incoming transmission Oh, good to be back. But we wouldn't have been able to travel back to 1987 to begin with if it weren't for our amazing reflux capacitors, namely Jared Holzhauer, Deborah Powers, Brian Keane, Patrick Hicks, LJ Lowry, Chris Cowan, The Feeling Film Podcast, Peter Panda, Chris Owens, Geek Devotions, The Untold Podcast, Mrs. Lomax, James Kennison, Daryl Hafner, Kevin Joshua Burnham, Drew of the Cellcast, Ashley Cronenberg, Passages, and oh my gosh, you're right here, uh, Kenneth, and new patron, Redeemed Otaku. Uh, in Woo! addition to five other awesome patrons as well. Thank you all so, so much for keeping the gigawatts coming. And if you want to help keep us flying for as little as $1 a month and get bonus content for your generosity, uh, head over to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash support, where you can find links to subscribe on both Patreon and Subscribestar. And while we're talking about subscriptions, in the month of August uh, 2020, that when we're recording this, when you're probably listening, uh, we are introducing our sticker tier, where for supporting the show at $15, a month, you will not only get our bonus content, show shout outs, a voice, uh, a vote in our final rain tiebreakers, and a chance to personally pick the movies we cover, but you will also get uh, one sticker a month with the show art for the movies or games we covered and a bonus sticker as well. Wow. But wait, Francisco, isn't there more? Why, yes, Paul. For August 2020, Again, the month we're in right now. Anyone who raises their current pledge by $5 or is a new patron at the $5 level will get also get the stickers every month for as long as they maintain that new level of support. Whoa, that's a great announcement, Francisco. Are you done now? Uh, do, you, do you want me to be done? And while we're thanking our supporters, we also want to give a big Castlevania hug to our subscribers on Twitch, which is another way to send us a couple bucks a month. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. Find out how at RetroRewindPodcast.com slash Twitch Prime. Uh, but hey, let's keep the gratitude train going now because we love hearing from you, be it our choo Apple choo. Podcast reviews, Pod Chaser, Pod Chaser reviews, comments on our website, or through our contact form. And here is what uh, one of you had to say. Mike Zeroni left us a five-star Apple podcast what? rating. 
gives a thumbs up and says francisco is a fantastic guy truly <laughs> selfless and produces a great show oh thank you so much mike Cerrone. i believe you're also nicks and mics uh, when you're here and chat with us on twitch but thank you so much for that review yes and thank you everyone for reaching out to us Retro Rewind Podcast.com slash 207 is the place to find timestamps for this episode, links to contact us, and links for voting on the movies you want us to review. Speaking of, we are very close to locking in the three movies we're going to be covering for Sci Frights in September and October. Uh, so now is the time to vote at Retro Rewind Podcast.com slash vote if you haven't. But our website isn't the only place you can reach us. Paul, where else can people find the show and also yourself? pauljpowers.com is where you can find me but feel free to talk to us and share anything you like or find funny that is 15 years or older on our social media we are retro rewind pod on facebook twitter all the socials and everything you can join our discord server by going to retro rewind podcast.com slash discord so when you go online it's the retro rewind podcast Indeed. on social it's just pod, pod. So, for Discord, go to RetroRewindPodcast.com slash Discord. Indeed. And as, as I have mentioned, we are on Twitch. You can watch and chat with us live, like these fine folks are doing right now as we record this podcast. Uh, Francisco also plays retro video games like Castlevania 2. <laughs> what? And creates pixel art. And you can follow us at Twitch.tv slash RetroRewindPod. And if you want to find me again, I'm PaulJPowers.com. So guess what? Go to PaulJPowers.com. Dot com. Thank you, PaulJPowers.com, for being a fellow Vampire Slayer friend, co-host. I so appreciate getting to uh, slay these uh, movies and games uh, with you on this show. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> I enjoyed doing this show with you very much. And I'm um, also grateful for our guests taking uh, time out of their busy schedule mm. to discuss Castlevania 2 with us. Uh, so let's start with Pastor Dustin. Please tell us how we can find you online. And is there anything you'd like to promote? Yeah. Um, so I stream uh, every Friday through Monday here on Twitch at pa uh, Pastor Deustin. You can find me anywhere on the internet at Pastor Deustin, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, all uh, the places that spelled the same. MySpace? MySpace coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just at Pastor Deustin, but um, yeah, primarily you'll find me on Twitter and Twitch. Uh, awesome. Uh, like I always say, I'm a real pastor who plays Pokemon, Doom, and everything in between. So uh, there's lots of retro stuff on my channel, too. Love mm -hmm. to see you there. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm, I, I was just going to say real quick, I'm a big fan of Pastor Deustin's streams. He's really fun to watch and engaging. So definitely, if you if you're anywhere at all in the Twitch ecosystem and enjoy watching live streams, definitely check out Pastor Houston. Well, yeah. thank you. Of course. <laughs> and we also like to thank our game correspondents, Cool Woot Deluxe, woot. for joining us yet again <laughs> for another game. So, uh, Kitos, please tell how people can find you online and is there anything you'd like to promote? Um, so people can find me online at... Um on Twitch or Twitter at Cool Deluxe, uh, Q O O L D E L U X X. Um, that's the same on both Twitch and Twitter. Uh, and nothing to promote this time. Okay. No worries. Thank you so much, uh, Deustin, uh, Paul. Paul. Well, I mean, you're always here, Paul. I appreciate you being here too, but Kitos. Wow. <laughs> Deustin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of the show, really making it really, just all that more better uh, to have you guys here. Uh, but that's not all. Mostly, I appreciate you. Yes, you listening right now, Simon, Alucard, Camilla, Townsperson number four. Whether this Captain is your Ed. Captain Ed, whether this is your first time listening to the show or you're a part of our Rad Rewinder community, thanks for spending time with us, and we pray you are more joyful now than when you first hit play. I have yeah. been and continue to be <laughs> Francisco Ruiz. <laughs> Find me on Instagram at FXRUIZX or Twitter at FXRetro underscore. And DM me there, either of those places, probably Instagram uh, more so than Twitter, for pixel art commissions. And also... This stream is sponsored by PaulJPowers.com. And finally, we are proud to be part of the Christian Geek Central network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. 
You can catch us at CGC or our website. But like a Pokemon, we got to catch you all for men, mainly men. They're men in tight, tight tights. That's right. Robin Hood, men in tights. Our next episode for the Retro Rewind podcast. Retro Rewind mission complete. Proceed to that point, Omega, and return to base. Ah, uh, finally, the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night! whoop Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>